this week on CrossFeed. Does prayer change things legally? Which comes first, religious freedom or reproductive freedom? What happens when you disagree with your church? And woo, touchdown, Jesus. <laughs> I'm Pastor Joe Burnham, uh, assistant pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Denver, Colorado, and uh, guest host this week uh, with Pastor Dale. How you doing? Good, good. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio, right outside of Cleveland. Welcome, everybody, CrossFeed Religious News. Uh, Jim's on vacation uh, this week, so um, so Pastor Joe has uh, agreed to join us. So, Joe, how you been? I'm doing well. It's been a while since I've been here, but yeah, I've um doing uh some really cool stuff is coming up. I'm getting ready to uh join my family and and haul ourselves off to Africa for about 4 months at the beginning of 2010 and uh spend about a month in Kenya beginning a a doctoral program there and then be heading uh to South Africa and teach at one of our sister seminaries there and hopefully help out in a couple congregations and do some other things. Uh, over a little over two and a half months. And so uh, some big things going on. If you're uh, on Facebook and want to find out all the details, you can go to facebook.com slash Africa 2010. Cool. Well, see, Africa has never had the Olympics, but they get Joe instead. So and, you know, you really can't beat it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a trade-off, you know? Olympics or Joe? Yeah. <laughs> I have the facial expression Olympics going on that you'll get <laughs> thoroughly enjoy in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, Joe's already Actually, sort of, up, so. <laughs> I'm all ready to go. It was it's sort of interesting though. Uh, four years ago, when the um, the World Cup was in Germany, I happened to be in Germany uh, at the same time that a lot of the World Cup stuff was going on. And now, four years later, the World Cup is in South Africa. And just a short time before the uh, World Cup begins, I will be in. South Africa. So I don't know where it is four years from now, but I seem to have this following the World Cup kind of trend starting up here. So somewhere else I'll be in four years. It'll be fun. Okay. So and and just you know, the there's there's two continents that haven't had you know the Olympics. There, there's Africa, and so once Africa gets it, then guess where Joe's going? <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be cool with that. That could be a, an interesting place to go. And uh, I don't know what would you do in Antarctica as a pastor? Maybe maybe sabbatical and write or something like that. <laughs> yeah, there's so much ministry to the penguins, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> I get myself in trouble for commuting penguins or something. That would be. <laughs> I probably just got myself in trouble for suggesting something like that. <laughs> you just go do miracles with fish and bread, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Right. So where are we going to begin this week? <laughs> um, well, let's see. Let's uh, why don't we start out with this is kind of a follow up story. Um, the um, the reproductive rights uh, story. Um, okay. There was a couple of doctors in California uh, that were asked. To uh, doctors Douglas Fenton and Christine Brody, uh, back in two thousand one, um, they were asked to uh, inseminate uh, a woman uh, who I, I, I don't totally understand this. It, it says that uh, uh, Guadalupe Benitez of Oceanside, California, sued them when they cited their religious beliefs in refusing to perform the procedure for her and her partner, Joanne Clark. Um, so I guess the two of them requested it, but I'm thinking that, well, who did they actually, well, it, you know, you can, unless they're asking to them to do the procedure for both of them. Um, it's it's kind of odd how the story's written. But, um, yeah, it's poor grammar there, but... Yeah, so anyway, they said... Uh, you know, we just, because of our uh, religious beliefs, we're um, really not comfortable uh, doing uh, this procedure for um, for uh, a lesbian couple. 
And uh, so it was taken to the Supreme Court, and California Supreme Court ruled against the doctors, saying religious liberty claims could not trump illegal discrimination. Uh, well, now the um, they have uh, basically settled, and the doctors said that uh, all of their patients, including those who are lesbian and gay, they want them to feel welcome and accepted in their medical practice. They were sorry Benitez and Clark felt that they were being discriminated against. And by the way, Benitez went to another doctor, got pregnant, and the boy is seven years old now. <laughs> Those kids! So. You know, it's it, the whole thing actually sort of, it, it, I mean, the whole setup strikes me as odd. Um, maybe there was, uh, you know, a. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a couple of doctors who are holding to their 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 personal beliefs, which seemingly they should be allowed to do because this would be discriminatory towards them as their individuals, you know, as as Christians and holding to their beliefs and doing what they think is right. And maybe it's you know you could bring up the whole discussion of, of how we talk about sexuality and homosexuality and in the public sphere instead of just saying, okay, here's my religious beliefs. Um, I, I don't think it's right for me to artificially inseminate a woman who's part of a lesbian couple. But it just, the, the whole situation, it just seems really odd, especially, you know, they, they go to the doctor, the doctor says, you know, this is who I am. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of this. And, and what do they do? They turn around and go to a different doctor. Why didn't they just turn around and go to a different doctor? I mean, it just, the whole thing seems odd to me. Well, and the irony is they did go to a different doctor. Yeah. And, and, you know, there have been a number of cases like this. And um, in, in every case, the doctor, um, at least every case that I've seen, and I've seen quite a few, um, the, the doctor always says, look, I can't, but let me refer you to someone who will, you know. And, I mean, mm -hmm. it, and, and it, what it comes down to is he, he, they could have just sort of um, said, uh, you know what, I'm going on vacation, so let me refer you. That would have been okay. But because it was because of their religious beliefs, you know. And, and the thing is, okay, if if they said, no, you know, if you're not married, then no. You know, and if you were a heterosexual couple and you were coming in here um, and, and you weren't married, I'd also say no, you know. But this is... This is one of those situations um, that you find happening where generally when they go in there, uh, they know that, you know, we're going to make this a test case. And, um, but, you know, that bothers me. If nobody's hurting anybody, nobody's, you know, they're, not, they're, this is what I believe. Why do you insist on coming in and making trouble? Yeah. You know? And it's, it's not like they were out in the middle of nowhere and had no way to go somewhere else. They're in Oceanside, California. You know, I mean... <laughs> I have a feeling there's just a couple more doctors in the area. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing so. And I'm guessing that most of them, um, you know, or at least on average, you're probably... There's enough. Yeah, there's enough that you're going to be able to find someone to perform that. Help you, I can. Yes. And, and, and I, well, and I get irritated in, in this in the sense that, you know, it, the doctors are, are, are as individuals personally holding to their own beliefs. They're not uh, making some sort of public statement saying uh, these women are horrible people. Uh, we don't like these women. These women are doing an awful thing. They're, they're, they're just at, at a very, I mean, from everything, it seems at a very private level, holding to their beliefs, explaining this is sort of where we am. We, we like you as a couple. We're, we're, we're glad that you've been coming to us. We're, we're happy to, you know, uh, work on, you know, apparently they were, I'm guessing they had to be their doctor, the doctor for some point in time. I mean, it doesn't seem you just randomly pick out some doctor to go to them unless you're doing it purely as an agenda case because you've heard, oh, these are the Christian doctors in town and so we better go get them. You know, I'd, I'd like to, to put the, the, the best uh, construction on, on, on the couple um, that, that, that they knew these doctors beforehand, that they were the family or the, you know, their individual personal doctors. Um, the whole thing, it just... I got a bad feeling about this. Uh, just, 
I just don't get it. it. It just the whole setup and the whole way this all played out really seems weird. It's not like they were making a a, a big public statement against these these women. It's not there was um, you know anger towards them. It's it's simply saying at a very personal private level, this is what we believe and this is who we are and we just we we don't feel right doing this. And and it seems like somebody should say, you know what. You're, you're nice to me as a person. Um, we disagree on, on some things. Okay, we're going somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, bless you on, on your way. We, we, we wish you the best. Yeah. You know, I've, I've seen, um, I've, had, I've had friends that have, have struggled with this where they had a, a friends who were a lesbian couple that adopted a child. And, and how do they, uh, you, know, um, you know, they're doing sort of the, hey, we, we adopted a child party. Uh, and, and my friends have said, okay, we want to go cause we want to be there for the kid and we want to be a positive influence in the kid's life. And we want to be a part of, of helping to raise this child. Cause we think that's important as, 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 as friends and, and to be that positive influence. But we also don't want to come alongside and tell this couple, Hey, we think what you've done is okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, and entering into that, that sort of challenge. And at, at one point are you saying, you know, personally, we, we don't approve of this or, or think this is right, but we also want to, um, you know, serve the, the, the child that, that has come you know, into their, their home as, as best as they can. Sure. Um, yeah, this which is, is, I mean, this is like the, um, where, uh, churches, uh, there's a child conceived out of wedlock and, um, and then they go to the pastor and they want the, the baby baptized. Right. And I've heard of places where the pastors will baptize the baby. Oh, good grief. Okay. You know, it's one thing to say, um, okay, let's, let's understand that the, um, the, the actions involved that caused this baby to be here, um, were sinful. All right. Yeah. But, you know, um, at the same time, a baby is never a sin, right? A baby is a gift of God, even if that baby is conceived in a sinful way because you know well, God blesses us even though we're sinners. And talk about a beautiful opportunity to to give the couple a sample of grace to say how can we support this child and how can we love the, and and make a point of loving the child even as as the couple knows hey we, we we disagree with how this all came down we disagree with the order things went in we would really like to see that the the two of you. Um, confess your sin. We would love to see the two of you uh, make a commitment to the child and to one another. We would love to, to see this all move forward in, in healthy ways. Um, but, but you know, ultimately we want to make sure that this child has the best life that it possibly can because we realize that things are going, to be, are going to be really difficult for the two of you. Right. Yeah. And so, so you know, a situation like this, I, I firmly believe that um, doctors should be able to refuse um, any particular kind of practice that they want, um, mm-hmm. you know, and the question of discrimination, you know what, um, they weren't, this isn't a, a separate but equal sort of thing. Um, this is, you know, I, I'm not out of line here in saying that this particular action, um, this choice of lifestyle, um, that I, you know, I, I disagree with that now, and I'm not. I'm not saying that um, that that uh, gay and lesbian tendencies are necessarily a, a personal choice. Um, I don't know, and in fact, the psychological community doesn't really know. There's the jury's still out on it. Um, but what I'm saying is, how you choose to act on those tendencies and, and that that is a choice. And, and so if, if you choose to embrace that particular lifestyle, then I say, you know, I, I really think that God wants something better for you. Um, that, yeah, this, this may seem like kind of the easy way to go. Um, it, it's certainly the way that your, your body's pushing you. But you know what? Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, uh, you know, sometimes that means that we have a hard time getting up on Sunday morning to go to church. Uh, sometimes it means that your body pushes you towards somebody um, in such a way that is not what God wants for you. And, um, you know, so here in the situation for someone to look at this and say, you know what, I just don't think that this is the best, uh, the best environment, uh, for a child to be raised. And, and while, you know, if you want to do that, that's your right, but I'm not going to, um, 
I, I'm not going to be a party to it. You know, it's the same way that if a person wants to smoke cigarettes, then, um, you know, that's their right. But I'm not going to go buy their cigarettes for them. Yeah. Well, and I think there's this is an opportunity to do things like pull up, um, you know, the, the Chinese put some huge restrictions on American couples that want to adopt Chinese children. And there's there's a lot of limitations. And, and, and so they've laid all this out and, and say, you know what? And the Chinese did this because they they want the optimal environment for for a child, and and I don't do artificial insemination unless it's the optimal environment for a child, which includes you know, a uh, man and woman who have been married, a healthy marriage for a number of years. Uh, they have you know maybe certain health requirements for the couple. Um, that it's you know there, there's enough kids out there in really screwed up situations. We don't need to encourage more. And it's not to say that this couple wouldn't be loving towards the child and it, it wouldn't be that they wouldn't you know, do the absolute best they could. Um, but is it, is it shy of, of an optimal environment? And I think that's sort of where we, you know, a lot of the time when we end up in, the, in those discussions of those kinds of things, it's like, well, it's better than, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's better than um, a alcoholic father and – uh, a a mother who invites her rapist brother over for lunch every Sunday. Well, yeah, just about anything is better than that. Right, you know, right. you don't you don't you, you wouldn't don't do it for that, that situation too. Marker that you could. <laughs> right. you know, I wouldn't do it in that context either. You don't yeah. mark it the lowest. You say if you're talking about the life of a child, you always say, "What's the optimal? What's the best? What is is the highest we can get? And and how high can we push towards that? And 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 obviously, it's never going to be perfect. But you know, kids are important, and and kids. I mean, we can all probably say growing up in, in a, in a uh, either a healthy environment has, has been greatly beneficial to a lot of us or growing up in, in a dysfunctional, ugly environment has done a lot of damage to a lot of us. And, and there's, there's a lot of stuff. to. And so why would we want to put kids in a context where we don't know how it's going to affect them long term? You know, the, the only study I've seen on it that's you know, this sort of thing is they said, well, it, it's no worse than – um, kids being raised in the home of divorce. Well, the home of divorce is a jacked up place for a kid to be raised. If it's yeah. no worse, I mean, that means your baseline is still jacked up. You know, it's it, they've, they've but they've turned around and seen you know healthy homes and 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 the major benefits to children of of a man woman married committed um, loving towards children supportive stable all of that stuff. Is, it, it's demonstrated that it's healthy and it's good and it works. Um, and, and until you can come along and say, see, this is as optimal as this, then I, I question and doubt it. I think we had a bad influence on her. So, where do we get from that? Um, let's see, yeah. Uh, okay, we go well, from... you might disagree with us, okay? Um, and so then this really comes up, this is actually a pretty good transition because... Uh, there's a whole question of respecting people that disagree with you. Don't you have any respect? Yeah, it's a um, an article that, that stems from uh, USA Today, and it, and it talks about uh, Congress, both Congress and the church, and and the whole idea um, of of people that have uh, you know very different viewpoints, you know, opposite polar end of the spectrum, Republican versus Democrat. Um, in in this context, that that uh, lesbian couples should be able to be artificially inseminated and have children versus they should not. Um, you know, they're, they're they're sort of the opposite ends of the spectrum on opinion. And and the whole article is is the question of whether or not you need to respect those who hold views that are polar opposite, contrary to yours. Um, and. Uh, what we're seeing a lot in, both in Congress and in churches is, is the idea um, that you don't have to respect them. They're, they're just obviously idiots and jerks and, and incompetent and therefore deserve to be labeled as such and called such. Right. Um, now, before we go further, they, there was um, – this is, this is all out of a, a, was a Pew uh, survey. Yeah, um, Pew Forum yeah, on Pew, Religion yeah. and Public Life. Okay. And – the way that I th it looks like it's worded is, is it um, to say one side or the other 
the other person isn't a respectable view. Mm -hmm. And now, I think there's a difference between this is a respectable view versus this is a, this is a respectable person. Yeah. Um, the problem is we're pretty good at blurring that line and making excuses uh, for when we disagree with the person's viewpoint that that gives us license to treat them like garbage. Yeah. So, and, and there, I think it's, it's two different debates there. Uh, as, as far as whether it's a respectable view or not, um, you know, that comes down to sort of hearing the person out, which we're pretty lousy at. You know, I have um, sort of unintentionally uh, surround, I mean, with the exception of my church and a, a bunch of pastors that I know, um, most of the people that I have called my friends um, over uh, pretty much from high school on um, were not Christians, um, tended to be on the opposite end of the political spectrum uh, from me. And, um, but, you know, for the most part, we respected each other and, and said, you know, I disagree with you. And we had all kinds of debates and stuff. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we said, well, you know, it was, we both grew from, from hearing each other out, even if we didn't, yeah. you know. Learn to know the dark side of the force. The problem is we, you know, especially if it's somebody that you don't particularly know very well, um, or that you don't consider a friend, um, it's, you kind of have the, um, you think, well, it's okay to just, uh, call them out and, uh, and, and not just call them out, but call them names. Well, yeah, it quickly moves from disagreeing with a a viewpoint, a, a, a you know, an, a, a thought on some matter, to um, disagreeing with them as a person, as 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 who they are, their character. It's, um, you know, one of the I think one of the classic things that I that I see with this, and and I, um, I get here to I, I I live in a very very liberal neighborhood. I know a lot of very liberal people. Um, I, I am not the most conservative of the conservatives in the world, and 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 but in my neighborhood, I'm very very conservative, comparatively speaking, um, especially on on a lot of 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 moral issues. Um, but I, I listening to people in, in in my neighborhood always get frustrated on the you know the the saw uh, an Ann Coulter quote or something like that about you know all Democrats they're just baby killers they hate babies. And, you know, and, and even the, the idea of, of describing yourself as, as pro-life does what? It sets up the other side as pro-death. Yeah. And, and, you know, they just hate babies. They want to kill them all. And, and, and there's nobody out there that just hates babies and wants to kill them off. I mean, I don't know anybody who's out wanting to commit, you know, infanticide. Or how would you say it? Infanticide? Yeah, yeah infanticide. Yeah. yeah. To just intentionally you know, for no particular reason, yeah. Let's let's just wipe out all of them, you know. It, you know, it, with the exception of like Herod, you know. And, yeah. and, and so you have the, the New Testament example. That was that's, ex but but it's not like the the, the Democratic Party or, or people that are are, are for you know, pro-abortion are are wanting to do that. Um, they just have an entirely different base set of values. I was talking to a guy the other night, and and for him, it was it was an issue of. Um, an, an individual freedoms. And, and so for him, it, you know, the entire, uh, pro life side was all about taking away the rights of individuals and forcing people to conform to somebody else's standards and rules. Which, no, it's not. It's one side, you know, and, and I said, well, here's, you know, here's, here's a different take. And we were able to have a discussion as we sat there and, and said, you know, and, and from my side, it's, I'm saying that there is, is, you cannot rank one life over another. As, as soon as you, as soon as you begin to do that, um, this this mother's life and dreams and values and, and where she's heading is more important than than the child. And what you've done is you've entered into a world of eugenics. You're, you're setting up one person as more important or more valuable or more worthwhile. And and as soon as you begin to even approach that line. You're, you're entering into into dangerous territory. You're on a slippery slope. 
Um, because then you, I mean, you get into all sorts of quality of life questions and, um, you know, it just opens up a whole new, you know, education levels and, I mean, all kinds of things open up at that point. Um, and, and so we were able to say, okay, so he has this one side or this angle or something he emphasizes. And, and for him, a lot of that stems from the fact that he's a gay man. And, and so for him, the idea of individual freedoms and rights is, is, is huge in that sense. Um, and, but, but, and so we was, but we were able to present both sides and we could sort of understand each other and, and have a conversation and, and walk away disagreeing, but at, at least we were respectable towards each other. Right. Right. And saying, you know, I always find it so helpful just to see what, uh, position people are coming from. You know, why do you believe what you believe? You know, I mean, yeah, because what's, most what's people. the story that brought you here? Yeah. You know, and, and even just to, um. Okay, to use a, a really off the wall um, uh, illustration, all right. In <laughs> in the original Star Wars trilogy, okay, um, you know you've got Darth Vader. He's sort of like evil for the sake of being evil, all right. Yeah. Okay, so it's really not until you get the prequels, which most people would like to just sort of get rid of. I enjoyed them because I sort of took them on their own and and uh, uh, set aside all of my preconceptions. Um, but uh, they, you know, there yeah, you sort of I, see I, I the motivation. I liked it because they gave you the backstory. Yeah. But then you see the motivation. Then you see how he got to where he was at. All right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so while a lot of people said, yeah, but the backstory wasn't plausible, you know, okay, fine. But, um, but like, okay, if you're gonna have a villain, I mean, I I, I majored one of my um, degrees is in theater, and uh, in my uh, playwriting class, they said, all right, if you're gonna have a villain, you know, he's got to have motivation. Nobody sets out to be Adolf Hitler, and even Adolf Hitler had a motivation that he thought he was doing the world a favor. He really yeah. saw himself as a good guy, as as a as a tremendous, wonderful savior of a person, right? I mean, he was wrong. Now, you know what? I am not trying to compare um, anybody who is uh, in favor of abortion rights to Adolf Hitler and Darth Vader, which. I Unintentionally done. <laughs> well, you know, actually, because the, because the way you set this up, I mean, it could just as easily be the the, the flip side are, are 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 the people that bomb abortion clinics who honestly think they're doing something good right. and right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So. So. Um. But yeah. You know, and and I, and I think at the end, so yeah, and that's where you get the, the difference between a respectable view and a respectable person. And and they might have come to a a, 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 a non-respectable, disrespectful, unrespectable. There we go. I could I can find a word an unrespectable viewpoint, or a, you know, a, a, a viewpoint that's just wrong, in in a very respectable way. Yeah, and and what it comes down to is. That, and I mean, I know people who are against abortion, but are in favor of abortion rights because they say, you know what, um, the only way that we're gonna um, that we're gonna get rid of abortion is to change people's hearts, not to sort of legislate it out of existence. I would disagree with that because since it, when it's legal, that's sort of the government rubber stamping it and saying it's acceptable. I mean, look at seatbelt laws. Right, we know what's safe and what's not. All right, but if it's if it's the law, <laughs> people will are more likely to follow the law and to you know, and it's a bigger deal if 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 the government says this is bad, um, yeah. then the that that perception um, transmits to the people eventually too. Well, it's it, it's good for civil righteousness. It's good in in relationship to neighbor and, and overall healthy society. It's good to have those kinds of laws in place. Now we could get into a debate as to whether that increases or decreases the odds of, of people coming to faith. Because does having a good civilly righteous society actually promote a works righteousness amongst people, and therefore a lack of a need for God, and therefore they don't recognize or they're less likely to recognize their sin because we, you know civilly set them up to be good people, but that, you know, that's a whole other discussion. 
Well, you know, I mean, honestly, the, I've always said that uh, what the Christian church needs more than anything um, is uh, persecution, you know? Yeah. And, and real persecution, um, which brings us to the touchdown Jesus story. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, it goes quite up now. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, Joe, you hold your head in just the right place, and you know, with that goatee and stuff like that, man, if you had some horns mounted on your uh, head oh, yeah. there, dude. You... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this was... Uh... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, I, I told the unrelated though. Um, anybody that follows me on Twitter or Facebook probably saw the note about this. But um, there was uh, at our, our preschool. Um, you know, we had the kids. Uh, they were uh, once a month. They have they call it chapel service, but it's really just they stand up and sing some songs, and then I stand up and and uh, do a little kind of children's sermon kind of thing. We got a puppet and stuff, and um, and. Uh, they were singing this song. It was, it was like three cheers for the flag, and and one of the kids, and they're all going, you know, three cheers for the flag. And one of the kids is going like this: three cheers for the flag. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like rock on, flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, only if you're at Woodstock and Jimi Hendrix is. <laughs> They have um, the, the cheerleaders who are putting up banners. Um, this is again, it's down in Georgia, and these banners, you know, these are the banners that the um, that the football players run through, and you know, they kind of smash through the paper and stuff like that. And and instead of like you know, beat the um, beat the the bad guys or something, or you know, whoever the the other team is, um, you know, it's. Uh, They've got like commit to the Lord and um and, and they've got these these Bible verses that uh and, that are supposed to be uh you know, okay, in the um especially in the in the, the letters of Paul, there's a lot of he uses a lot of sports imagery. Um Paul was a jock, all right. <laughs> and uh, so he uses wrestling and running and you know and, and all kinds of um different sports uh, illustrations when he's um when he's trying to explain the um the gospel and so you know they've got like uh um i press on toward the goal to win the prize for which god has called me in christ jesus and the football players come running through we're pressing on toward the goal of beating the you know getting the prize of winning the game and beating the other team and and um, and this has been going on since uh, they started doing this right after the nine eleven. Oh yeah, so eight years. Yeah, and um, oh well, somebody came along and said, "No, that's kind of a church state thing, um, because these cheerleaders are wearing school um, uniforms. They're they're there representing the school, and so they're doing this, and it's." representing this, it, you know, it sort of comes across as the school endorsing one particular religion. Mm -hmm. So they said, you, you kind of need to stop doing the science. And um, <laughs> so uh, there was a bit of a backlash about this. Keep in mind, this is in Georgia, all right? Uh, where, Bible Belt. Yep. So, you know, the whole kind of, you know, you talk about civil righteousness and that, and and that it's it, there's such a connection between the um, uh, the state and, and the church. I mean, it's the the line is really blurred. Oh, I was, I was going to say, yeah, at the the end of one of the articles here, our founding fathers had one thing in mind when they founded this country, and it was a Christian nation built upon the principles of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, wow. <laughs> You know, that that would crack me up because, you know, how people are always complaining about the history books um, having revisionist history. Like, oh, it's it's conservative revisionist history. <laughs> oh, it's exactly. It's the same thing. It's it's just going the other direction. <laughs> like, you look at the, 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 the best, the best thing I've seen on that. Yeah. 
Um, there was a, it, it was at a, a symposium at Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, and uh, Joel Okamoto was talking about it and said, you know, if that was really what they were intending, then baptism would have been a part of becoming a, a nationalized citizen. Uh, you know, we would be having communion as, you know, it'd be like the national meal, it's, you know, the, the Thanksgiving, you know, it just, that would just be a part of, 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 you know, those elements would be a piece of, of what was going on. And, and you don't see any of that. It's, was there good, you know, uh, Judeo Christian ethics in how they approach things? Sure. But that's just good civil righteousness relationship with your neighbor kind of stuff. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I think the thing that bothered me the most was that they're upset because they've got these big Bible verses and you got the football players smashing through it. <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, it's, it's, the, the whole thing is just wrong at every level. <laughs> What kind of a message is it that they're going, ah, smash through the, the word of God, get, you know, trash that. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna trash the word of God. We're, we're going to pull it out of context and apply it to something that really it has nothing to do no. with. Because let's face it, just, just pressing on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me in Christ Jesus include beating this team on the football field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, think so. So that kind of makes me want to smash through it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it so the, the misuse, the abuse, the poor, yeah. not teaching people how to read scripture, but stripping out a verse and just sort of making it mean whatever you want to. Yeah. Um, and, and then the, the, the whole side of, of Christian, this is we're we're being persecuted for, for saying the word of God. It's yeah. Our freedom of speech and freedom of religion is being taken away. My latest analogy on this, okay, and, and it works really well in this case because you have, you know, cheerleaders. But, uh, you know, imagine if one of those cheerleaders uh, just is not a nice person at all. And here she is, Miss Popular, Miss Cheerleader, Miss Queen of the School, who ends up being rejected. Because he's treated everyone else in the school like dirt. And then she cries and screams and begs, why don't you like me anymore? I want my popularity back. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a reason that, that there's groups in our society who are saying we don't want the Christian influence and, and, and position and authority. And in many ways, don't we end up sounding like that obnoxious cheerleader when we're saying, give us our freedoms back. We deserve this. We, we deserve equal rights with everyone else. You know, now it's maybe we should chill out a bit and say, huh, maybe there's, there's a reason that, that, that society is sort of marginalizing us. And, and maybe we need to maybe shift our, our approach to things and, and, and come back to a place where people do respect us because not of we fought for our rights and our freedoms, but because of, of, of who we are and, and, and the way that we treat people and, and the love and the grace and the respect and the, you know, all those sort of things that we show towards people who have differing viewpoints. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I've always said, uh, and we were just talking about respect for people with other viewpoints and, um, you know, I've always said that you can um, you can command respect or you can demand respect, right? Mm-hmm. And if you demand respect, if you have to demand respect, then you probably don't deserve it. Yep. And But if you command respect, if you act in a respectable way so that people can't help but respect you, that's real respect, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's and I, and I think there was a time and a place when when Christianity had that at a broad level in the U.S. There was a, you know a a sense of that. It, it it is no. In fact, well, all of Western civilization, Christianity had that. It was it was it was respectable, um, not because it demanded it, but because it commanded respect. Um, and 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 that's sort of fallen away. And now there's a shift to want to demand. Yeah, it kind of goes back and forth. I mean, you know, the church has certainly done things. Um, there have been situations where it demanded respect. You know, no one expected the Spanish Inquisition. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, it just, that never pans out. It, it never, um, it, it never works. It always backfires. And because what it comes down to is you can't force somebody into faith. And, um, and it just, it makes you look bad. You know, you look at, uh, at, at Jesus, Paul, you know, the apostles, they, they went out there, they proclaimed the message, you know, um, 
but they didn't they didn't mis misrepresent anything. Um, they didn't take things out of context. Uh, they didn't, and and what it came down to is they acted in such a way. I mean, you know, Christians even in in the the very early uh, first couple centuries of Christianity, Christians were seen as sort of strange, but people respected them. You know, these are these are people that you know you talk about uh, about pro life and all that kind of stuff. You know, the early Christians. Um, in, in Rome, it was legal for you if you decided within, I think, the first year um, of a child's life, you decided that you just couldn't take care of that child, that child was a burden on your family or, or whatever, that you could just leave that child um, in the ditch somewhere to die. Mm -hmm. And the Christians would, would come along and they'd see these, um, these children laying in the ditch left there to die, and they'd take them home and adopt them. And they'd make them, you know, full members of their family. And, you know, people are going... What? What's Why? the yeah? What's yeah. the deal? And um, you know, and, and the Christians, just, hey, you know, these are people that Jesus died for, and, and um, you know, they they deserve respect and, and they deserve to be loved, and and you know, and, and people went, huh. Well, and, and you look at First Peter and 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 the whole lineup that's going on there. I mean, he he opens talking about who they are in Christ and 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 their identity as as Christians, and then he gets into a whole section on where he sort of says, okay, so you, this you've been called to this so that you may proclaim the wonders of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, and then he goes into a whole section of living out their vocation and 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 battling sin in their own lives, and comes to a place in, in First Peter three where it says, um, you know. Always be prepared to give a, a, a defense for the hope that you have. Whenever, when, when anyone who asks you the reason for the hope that was is within you, and 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 the whole setup is that these people are living these lives that look different, that that challenge the status quo in the world around them, and, and the non-believers are coming and saying, "What's the deal?" And they're saying, "Well, let me tell you about Jesus." Instead of, "You're going to hell. Believe in Jesus." You know, it's. <laughs> It, it was what what's the deal why are you this way why do you why do you respect your wife the way you do why do you put in the honest work that you do why do you fight against the the, the challenges and the and the persecutions that you face and the struggles that you face and why do you wrestle with sin the way you do instead of just giving into your desires like the rest of us do and why do you do all this stuff well let me tell you about jesus right yeah you it's know, a totally different way we saw a, a modern example of this um Speaking of 9-11, right after the 9-11 attack, right, where you had, um, where the whole world, but especially the United States, is just sort of reeling and, and just didn't know where to turn, was just, just beside themselves. And, and the Christians were certainly not happy. I mean, I'll never forget that day and I'll never forget, you know, wanting to, to go to the school and, and grab my kids and bring them home, you know, um, and, and really had a sort of, come to terms with the fact that a, a little, you know, elementary school in rural Iowa is probably not a major terrorist target, you know, but, um, <laughs> but only in 24. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, but, you know, so I, I said, uh, but at the same time, like, you know what, it's going to be okay. God is with us. He's going to take care of us, you know, and, um, and in one way or another, even if we end up becoming a target. Even if we end up dying, we've got eternal life to look forward to. We've got the resurrection before us, you know? And and so, you know, there were a lot of people that, that went to the Christians and said, how can you be so calm about this? How can you just, you know, sort of take this in stride? You know? And, um, and, and, and there was a lot of, you know, I, I heard of a lot of the sort of, um, whatever it is that you have, that's what I want. Yeah, which, you know, I, I'm glad to hear that because a lot of the things, I mean, I remember the night of, of, of the event, you know, 9-11, that night, or yeah, I think it was that evening, there was a, a prayer service at the church I was at at the time, and it was just, it was horrible. It was, it was, it was sappy, and it was, it was hollow, and I mean, it was, I remember hearing the pastor talk about, um, you know, God had nothing to do that with this, and he's just sitting here crying with us. And and it's like what an impotent God! You know, I, I don't want that God. My 
you know, my God could have done something in that, and, and for whatever reason he chose not to, but he's cool enough that I'm going to trust him that, that him allowing that to happen is going to ultimately work out for good. I, I don't want the God that's, that's inept and incapable and, and, and you know. So it, I'm, I'm glad to hear that there was instances of that because so much of what I saw was, was at the other end. And, and it was frustrating, and it said, no, this is what Christians should be having hope and having strength in this time and, and not be a bunch of weenies <laughs> talking about a weenie God who's crying with us, you know, couldn't do anything about it, and now he feels sad. Anyway. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I don't know how we got Let's on to go watch Dr. Again. Phil and get some advice. <laughs> You can see the Dr. Phil show. My guest today is God. I'm going to help him with his insecurity issues. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the going back to the football thing, I think the other level where this whole thing is wrong is, you know, it's, it's the South. Christianity is the dominant religion. It still is a major player in how things work in the South. It's just how it is. But you've, you've got to stop and say, okay, what if – you're looking at it at, at sometime 50 years down the road where you know you know Muslims are the dominant religion in the south does that mean that that the christians are going to be cool if they put up verses from the quran there right yeah you know I, or, or for judaism that has a massive revival or you know I, mean, well, I guess they'd be okay with you know the old testament text but <laughs> but i mean more importantly we as christians need to be considering other people you know and saying all right how would I feel if I were, um, you know, if I were a Muslim surrounded by Christians, right? Would I feel loved? Is this sending a message of love to the people that are not Christians and saying, you know what? We still love you no matter what. Yeah. I, I, and I would contend, no, it's not. All right. This is saying, look, if you're not one of us, get out. Yeah. You're not welcome here. And that is not the message that the Christian church should be sending. The Christian church, the Christian church should be sending the message. We love you no matter what. And, you know, we disagree with your beliefs and we really hope that you come to know Jesus as we do. But if you don't, we're still going to love you. Yeah. And, and, and the Christian church isn't known for that, which is why it's now in a place of having to demand respect over command it. Yeah. So... so. <laughs> You know, I think we should disagree on one of these just so we can be disrespectful to each other and yell at each other and call each other names. <laughs> or, you know, we could uh, call down God's wrath on each other, um, like this we, last we story. <laughs> I, I, I pray that God will smash your children's head against the rocks. <laughs> right. So we've got, all right, so, so here's the setup, okay? Um, all right, here's this prayer, okay? Okay. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I was, I was going to like say, all right, will you please pray with me? But I can't even do that in good conscience. But, um, so, okay, here's, here's the prayer. Okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, today we pray imprecatory prayers from Psalm 109 against the enemies of religious liberty, including Barry Lynn and Mikey Weinstein, who recently issued a press release attacking me personally. God, do not remain silent. For wicked men surround me and tell lies about me. We bless them, but they curse us. Therefore, find them guilty, not me. Let their days be few and replace them with godly people. Plunder their fields and seize their assets. Cut off their descendants and remember their sins. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> you know you know what, what kept coming to my mind um, as I was the first time I, I read this? Um... You know, in Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, um, yeah, the um, or Notre Dame, um, the uh, there's there's this song, um, Hellfire, um, which actually is the reason that I didn't let my kids watch the movie when they were younger because it's all about the priest talking about his lust for this gypsy woman. Um, but in this this prayer, he's he keeps saying that it, it's beautiful. Um, song. He's he's praying to God and, and saying, or actually he's praying to Mary. Um, but but he's saying, you know, he's going. Oh, this is it's it's not my fault. It's it's this woman that's causing me to sin and all this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, there's the there's the people in the background in the church, 
and they're 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 um, singing the mass and they're doing it in Latin. And so he's going, "It's not my fault." And and the people in the background are going, "Mia culpa, mia maxima culpa." You know, it's all my fault. You know, forgive my sin. And he's going, "Not me. Nope. I don't have any sin to forgive." This is, I thank you, Lord, that I am not like this tax collector. Yeah, right, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm reading this and I'm good. Um, you know, therefore, find them guilty, not me. <laughs> yeah, just just the, the the sheer arrogance of of the way that the whole thing is phrased, and you know, it's it, it's not a, a righteous indignation and anger, and it, it's just. Being a pompous jerk. <laughs> so this was uh, this is. Wait, I, I should say I shouldn't say that because that's being disrespectful <laughs> towards his disrespectful viewpoint. But <laughs> there you go. But he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that's the problem with the church is all the darn hypocrites, you know. <laughs> I know. But you know what? I'm an idiot too. <laughs> yeah. but, right. Exactly. You know. Um. So this is this was written by a former military lawyer, or no wait, I'm sorry, no, that's backwards. Um, this is written by um, uh, Gordon Klingenschmidt, a former U.S. Navy chaplain, and he is being um, sued by uh, these two guys, Mikey Weinstein and um, and Barry Lynn, uh, specifically Weinstein. Um, who's Jewish, and he's saying, um, I want this guy to stop doing that because, uh, and, and not just because, you know, like he's worried that God's going to listen to him and go, oh, oh, you want me to, you know, to uh, plunder his fields? Okay, I'll do that for you, you know, like God's yeah. some sort of genie in a bottle. No, he's worried that, all right, this guy is a pastor, he's, a lot of people kind of follow him, and all it's going to take is for one nut job to go, oh, well, I can be the Lord's vessel, you know? <laughs> yeah. And because he's already received death threats, he had a swastika dot, uh, daubed on his home. He's, the guy's Jewish. Uh, it's a pretty uh, nasty thing to do. Uh, not that it's a nice thing to do to anybody, but, you know. Anybody, but, but you know, to a Jewish person specifically, you know. Yeah, right. And uh, had feces thrown at his house. See, that's that. That's that good <laughs> Christian love, you know, Gotta reaching love out to people. And and I think there's a huge difference here because obviously, you know, the guy's quoting scripture, so we can't say we should like dump the Psalms where they're, they're, they're the imprecatory bits. But is is it a a, a public pronouncement, a a statement? Yeah, you know, I, I think that there's a huge difference. I think in the sense of of you know, privately praying. These are my enemies. These are the things that they have done to me. God, this is what I would really like to see you do to them. Now I'm going to hand it over to you, and I'm going to trust that you're going to do whatever's right. And getting up and saying in front of a mass situation, God, do this to this person and do that to this person. You know, it's there's and everyone a, there's a join me difference. in this. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's a, there's a public th and here they're posting it on a website and it's like going out in this video format and. You know, there's, there's, it's completely different um, from a, a, a private prayer of, of this person is doing things that are, you know, and when you're when you're doing this, these kinds of things to somebody, you could understand why they would publicly rebuke you back. Now, if they were rebuking him for being a Christian chaplain. If they were rebuking him because his name sounded like it was a combination of a Vulcan and a Lutheran, <laughs> so you get Klingenschmidt. <laughs> you know? <laughs> if that they were rebuking him for something like that publicly, and he hadn't done anything to deserve it, other than having a name Klingenschmidt, then, then he should be welcome to go into the closet quietly and pray, God, I would really like to see you plunder my enemy's fields or something, you know? But, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I've, I've heard a, a guy talking about recently on the, on, on the imprecatory psalms, the idea of, of praying them not as a, um, this is what you're actually expecting God to do, but it's a way of you getting off of your chest and saying, God, this is what I would really like to see happen. 
this is the this is the way I would like to see you carry out justice. But I am gonna to, to say that I am gonna hand it to you, and I'm gonna let you let it go and, and let you deal with things the way you're gonna deal with them. And I ultimately count that your justice will be best in the end. Right. Yeah. You know, and pulling this back to the 9/11 attacks that you were talking about before. Okay. You know, how did you feel when that happened? You know, I, <laughs> I'm the, those guys, I wanted them dead. They already were. Okay. But, and I didn't want them to go to hell, but man, you know, anybody remotely connected, I wanted them brought to justice. I wanted them, you know, send them to the chair and, and, and that. And, and quite frankly, I still do. Okay. But. I'll also tell you that I've I ever had a chance to talk to any of them. What I want more than anything is for them to repent and for them to recognize the, the destruction and to see how much better the gospel is, how much better God's love is. You know? Yeah. All right. That's the difference. All right. It's one thing to say, this is how I feel. This is, man, if I were God, this is what I'd do. All right? This is how And then we'll all celebrate that you're not God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 you know? All right? But, you know, ultimately, yeah, it's, it's saying, this is, yeah, oh, this is just driving me crazy. And, and, man, this is, you know, and you know what? It would be absolutely just if you did this stuff. Yeah. All right? Um. But you know what? That decision's not up to me. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's the thing that is like, none of, none of these statements, and this is going to sound strange, none of this, you know, okay, most of it, um, is, is okay in and of itself, except what's missing from it is humility. Impressive. Um, uh, there's definitely the whole thing about find them guilty and not me kind of, um. You make me sad. I just, I have a hard time in any situation saying don't find me guilty at all. Yeah. <laughs> because you know what? Chances are I've had some part in the problem. Even if I don't know what it is, chances are. <laughs> so, uh. You know, so the first place you need to really start um, is is saying, "God forgive me," you know, and uh, but boy, and 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 you know, and the other thing is, help me to trust in you, you know, to handle this situation according to your wisdom, uh, yeah. and not mine, and um, help me to forgive, help me to recognize these people as people that Jesus died for as people that you love. And if you love them, then then who am I to not love them? This is true love. So Yeah. So yeah, speaking of uh, of of reasons that people uh don't respect Christianity in America. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah. So so that's uh, it for the stories. If you if you were counting, it was technically four. Um, the fifth story was actually I think we actually forgot to mention it because we've got so we, far we, off track. Um, and yeah, that was just, the amended highlight to it. Um, yeah, the, the uh, special field where you can put religious signs. Yeah, they, they they set up a separate area fifty yards away where you can put up any religious signs you want. Which I, fine, whatever, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the school's field, and, you know, so, what do you, uh, but, <laughs> there's, there's more problems than just <laughs> where to do it. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's, there's just issues across the board with this whole thing, it's, <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> It's it's one of those things. It, it makes me just sort of slam my head against the wall, and 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 you know, can I just get the T-shirt that says I'm not one of those Christians? <laughs> <laughs> you know, can I just? Do, is there some way that could, because they use multiple syllables when pronouncing the name of Jesus, can they do the same <laughs> thing with Christian to distinguish us and them? You know, they're Christians. 
you know, and, and something like that. And I'm just a Christian and they believe in Jesus and I just believe in Jesus. You know, can we just do that? <laughs> Cause I, had, I mean, just <laughs> had a friend in seminary that explained that the proper way to, he was from Texas and uh, he said, now the proper way to pronounce it, it's, it's Jesus. Five syllables. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> How do you get as many syllables as you have letters in a <laughs> Don't syllables demand vowels and cons? <laughs> no. There's a lot of schwas in that name. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> so, now we've talked about all about disagreeing with people. And I, the way things usually go, um, we'll hopefully get some comments on YouTube and they probably won't be real respectful. We have gotten some and, and, um, <laughs> And so for those, uh, we got a couple comments this week. Um, I'm going to defer those uh, for next week since some of the stuff was um, referring to, to Jim and stuff too. And so we'll just, we'll talk about that stuff next week. Um, so, but we do appreciate your comments um, and we'd love to hear from you, whether you're, uh, if you're watching this on the podcast feed, um, you can send us an email at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Um, or if you're watching this on one of the various video sharing sites, uh, you can just leave a comment there. I um, want to remind you that if you are watching this on one of the video sharing sites, you can go to crossfeednews.com slash podcast, and um, and it's a much higher quality video. We have to compress it quite a bit uh, to get it on the video sharing sites because of their uh, file size limits. Um, but on our own site, we don't have any limits, and so um, so as long as you, it's it's not high def or anything like that, but that's for your protection and benefit. <laughs> you don't want to see us in high debt. Um, but, uh, well, maybe they want to see me in high debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just for the facial yeah. expressions. <laughs> <laughs> the horns come through in the high debt yeah. version. <laughs> Much better, yeah. So, uh, well, we do thank you for tuning in. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, we, we appreciate being respectful, but we're um, sort of sadly amused by when it comes through and it's not very um, respectful. Um, and uh, not necessarily saying that we deserve your respect either. So, um, but we'd, we'd love to hear from you. So, um, you can also, uh, if you want to hear from us more uh, during the week, um, I'm CrossFeed News on, uh, on Twitter. And Joe and Joe Burnham on Twitter. So fairly B U R N H A M. So, um, so thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, have a good week. And uh, next, um, not sure if we're going to have an episode next week. Everything's kind of up in the air right now. Um, we might end up taking a week off. I'm not sure. And uh, but if, if nothing else, we'll see you in two weeks. You'll see us. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, good having you, Joe. So, um, good night, everybody, and God bless. Take care.